I'm Jared. And I'm Jared. Hi, Jared. And together we are Jared and Dave. Hi, um, Jared and Dave. All right, so every time we do one of these start season things, we're always, it, it, always, it always helps us to know what the level of uh, investment and knowledge is in the room. Because we don't want to waste your time talking about a lot of stuff that you guys have heard uh, 500 times. So if we can just start with a real simple show of hands, how many of you are actual, actual backers of Star Citizen already? Not sure. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, how, and how many of you, I don't know why you'd be at a panel, but have, have never heard of Star Citizen before today? I'll get them. So, for the few people who just discovered Star Citizen, I'm guessing you were dragged by somebody else. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's give the the, the give you a high level the nickel version, version of what is Star Citizen. So, basically, in a nutshell. Um, Oh, that's right, we put the animations in there. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Do we have any of the light control? Kind of yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we oh. have Is there somebody here for light control? State. Do we have that person? Have they left us? Is light control forsaken us? <laughs> All right, well, I'll start talking about Jared's looking. So, basically, in a nutshell, Star Citizen is a uh, crowdfunded uh, space sim game uh, that's basically entirely been put together from backers and. Uh, public, everyone, basically, getting involved with it. And in a nutshell, what it is, it's a comprehensive universe, in a sense. So it's it's sort of broken down into two two elements to it. There's a persistent universe, which is sort of an ongoing um, uh, multiplayer, multi-solar system uh, game where you can be whatever you want to be. We don't restrict you in sort of, like, you don't take a class when you start out. I think you, you want to wake up in the morning, you want to, you know, call some cargo. You can do that in the afternoon if you feel like you're somebody off. You can do that. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a sandbox that I'm My my 70 year old father has become a backer and supported the project, and <laughs> it only took me 40 years before my dad was proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> and comments on missiles too. Yes. Yeah. And he refers to it as a real life replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so we we don't want to advocate that 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 point of view, but Star Citizen. The, the, the world is, is meant to be is we provide you the tools and you go into it and make the game that you want to that you want to make up and it's dynamic too I mean it's a fully functioning like economy so you know uh, planets will react to how much trade is going through there there's a lot of crimes they'll start to put out jobs to you know get more security to try to down the crime which you know actually dilute some of the funding of the corporations so it's very complicated uh, uh, and the secondary component is uh, the Squadron 42, which is a single-player cinematic experience. If you guys, uh, Chris Roberts, also the creator of the game, who is the play main commander, uh, you know, you understand that that type of that type of cinematic uh, type of experience. So you get to play as a, a Navy pilot and uh, go on a thank you, thank you, uh, rollicking adventure. Side needs to go down. Yeah. 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 All right, so let, let's get through this and bring the lights back up because I want to see it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so those are the two components of the game. So right, so basically, the persistent universe. You can actually, uh, we are in very alpha stage right now, so uh, we're gearing up for basically a big uh, update to it called a 3.0 drive. The biggest update. Uh, but Squadron um, 42, we're still working very hard on. Uh, uh, so. In a nutshell, we'll give you a very, very high level. Let's get through this. So there's this handful of factions we get to deal with. Uh, uh, that was humanity that we just got through. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys have seen that before. To your uh, left, look to your right. <laughs> uh, and then we have another species called the Vanduul, who are very angry. Uh, <laughs> do not like us at all. Uh, and uh, we know very little about them because there's no sort of calculations. Uh, we have the Banu, who are uh, sort of ubiquitous traders, they just love commerce and stuff like that, and, and are kind of bizarre and weird, which I love about them. Uh, and we have the Xi'an, who are uh, very kind of stoic. They live for a very long time, so they're, they're sort of the diplomatic uh, element in the universe. And so they sort of push and pull between humanity and all the different factions and how they uh, how they interact and stuff like that, which is you know, one of the fun things about it. So we, you know, we want that sort of you know, diplomatic elements sort of change over time. So, sort of, 
the way things are sort of set up, you know, once once kind of you start playing it, the landscape, political and social landscape of the universe will actually start to change. So if you get into it a few years from now, it will be a different world for people to get into that now. So that's one of the, the idea. But it's, you know, uh, um, sorry, we just cut the lights down. Bring the lights back up. <laughs> uh, we do have something more to show you, but that'll be later. So we're gonna. Thank you. Thank you. You're a hero. So in a nutshell, we're making two very large AAA games, completely independent of the video game industry right now. It's the Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Each on their own could be a standalone title that would that would that would retail for sixty dollars and. And, and hopefully sell millions and millions and millions of copies <laughs> and whatnot. But we are actually developing two of these games at the same time without the support of a publisher. So it, pre it presents a lot of unique challenges. Uh, and we manage many of these challenges by having five studios around the world. Uh, with, we just passed over 500 employees. Uh, very recently, maybe last month, we just passed over 500 employees. And, uh, and we've been working on this since uh, we first introduced the concept in 2012. And we do this through crowdfunding. Uh, basically, we accept we, we sell spaceships uh, for pledge money and that help that help support the development of the game. And in return, we are doing something more than early access. Early access is a very common term in video games today. We are actually doing something much earlier than early early access. We are building the game out live in front of our backers. So it is, you are seeing the earliest versions of individual game systems being assembled like a Voltron as, as we're building this game. And it a, it's a, presents a unique challenge in video game development because it's not like any other project out there. Uh, an early access or an alpha for, for a game like uh, Fallout 4 or whatnot would be a virtually complete Game. Yeah, the it, the chips are all there. Yeah, it's everything it's done. It's just they're kind of stress testing. It's gonna have some bugs. It's gonna have missing textures and stuff like that. We are actually missing entire game systems right now. <laughs> you know, they, they they still have to be built. So it is a very unique experience, and uh, it makes uh, working with a community who, who who understands this and sometimes understands it less than we we prefer, <laughs> or sometimes just forgets. Uh, it, it presents a lot of unique challenges. Uh, and I'm sure for everybody that's uh, who raised their hand that they were a backer, you're very familiar with the challenges of developing Star Citizen live in front of everybody. Uh, to to make this uh, to make this possible, we do a variety of web shows. We produce 18 episodes of YouTube content every single month uh, in a variety of fields. We have we have our Around the Verse show, which is our behind the scenes documentary that we make every single week. Uh, we have Lore Maker's Guide to the Galaxy, where we take our members of our CIG lore team and they discover the, the mystery, mirth, and mayhem of our, our yeah. short part. Yeah, we go into the background of basically the solar system that you can explore and stuff like that. Uh, <coughs> bug Smashers. Bug Smashers, where we have, a, we have a programmer identify a bug and fix the bug live in code. <laughs> and you, you think, that's a video? It's a, one of our most popular videos that we put out. It's <laughs> super compelling. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. And it's really things that only our community, only our project, only our community will allow us to do. We, we do Q and A section, uh, segments like this uh, in our in our biweekly happy hour. We do a monthly subscribers town hall uh, where we take questions. We're basically, what we're doing, what we're going to be doing here tonight uh, in just a few minutes, and uh, we even create game assets live with input from the community. Uh, we had Dave on a show just a month or two ago where you created an asteroid base. Yeah, we basically kind of sourced it with the community and worked with the community to kind of come up with the backstory and uh, potential direction. So basically having people vote on like, did it go this way or did it go that way? And you know, people voted live and we basically just took whatever they voted and then we just ran with it and kind of pushed it down and basically set it aside for something for future development to put in a pitch to get in the game. So people who support the project now aren't just getting this earliest access, watching us build the game. They're not just giving us feedback with, okay, this doesn't work, this does work. They're actually now helping to create the content that will actually go into the game. So it's one of the things that sets Star Citizen apart from just about any other video game. Uh, yep. project. And it's wonderful too, because again, like one of the benefits of doing it is that most games don't get to test their games, even in, in sort of early builds, 
with large amounts of people and we actually have a great asset in our community because they help us and they find so many bugs so fast <laughs> that it's like you know our, we have a great QA team but we had to build the issue council we, yeah we, we built a the only video game in history to have a front-facing web platform specifically for reporting and replicating bugs in our game and we basically have deputized all of our backers into being QA testers because when you're trying to make the biggest video game of all time, and you're trying to make the second biggest video game of all time at the same time, you need all the help you can get. So it's, it's been a fantastic turnaround. I think uh, the last report, uh, something like 400,000 bugs have been reported through the Issue Council. So just stellar turnaround. Yes. So with that, uh, we're getting to the Q&A part of our thing. Uh, basically, we do have one thing to show you, but we're gonna hold on to that towards the very end. You know, That's it, marketing. <laughs> uh, but, but for now, and from now until the end of the panel, uh, we are open to questions. So there's a microphone set up over here. I'm hoping against hope that it's that's actually live. If somebody wants to, to yeah, yeah, see, come on. <laughs> switch, switch. I don't have any people. Hey, switch, press switch. Now the sliders are up. Oh. There you go. Mm -hmm. oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. so yeah, guys, you want to. Line up. You can ask us questions. This is, this is your this is your time to put us on the hot seat. Uh, Dave is a is the lead writer for Star Citizen Squadron Forty Two. So if you have any uh, questions about story and whatnot, he's, he's your guy for that. Uh, I am I am basically the community community manager for Star Citizen. Uh, I run all of our Q and A's and stuff. So I've heard the answers from just about every department in our in our in our company. So you can be a little bit more broad. Hello. 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 So I'm one of the backers from a long time ago, and I have to ask this every year at DragonCon. Um, when will I be able to sit in my Phoenix in my hot tub <laughs> <laughs> and then have my concierge drive me in a race while I'm in my hot tub? <laughs> very important. That's a, yeah, that's a very serious question. Well, the, 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 the Phoenix has been built out in its hangar ready state. You already know that. That's where it's got the, the hot tub. Uh, Josh Coons, our, one of our vehicle artists out of our Austin studio, is slated to begin work on the, on the Constellation Phoenix any minute. Like, it, it was supposed to start already, but he's had to, had to finish up some, some 3.0 cleanup tasks. Uh, he's, if you watched around the verse a couple weeks ago, you saw some texture work that he was doing on the on the Phoenix. We basically have to rebuild the Phoenix from scratch based on the Andromeda, the most recent version of Andromeda. Um, I don't want to rain on your parade a little bit, though. There's no guarantee the hot tub survives. Oh, I would be very sad about that. Yeah, and, and, and no decision has been made about this whatsoever. It's just, it's just well, it's, we're having, there's lots of conversations about whether it should be a hot tub, whether it could be something else that's equally awesome as a hot tub, but no decision has been made, so I, don't, I just... Can you add mimosas to that discussion? <laughs> <laughs> whether or not the hot tub stays, there should be space mimosas. That is like... Uh, yeah, we, we can definitely yeah, get some champagne out there. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just the person recording this on the GoPro for Reddit, yes, mimosas confirmed. <laughs> That's going to get me an email from Chris Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have a whole conference page dedicated to liquor, so it's okay. <laughs> Hello! Hey, how are you doing? Good. All right, so during Gamescom footage, we saw the Idris frigates in action, and there was some discussion about permissions for accessing ships and who gets to do what. Has there been an addressing for a sort of command structure or how to deal with, let's say, insubordinate crew on your ship who think that shooting their buddies in the back is all, you know, fun and games? Uh, I, I, I know they're still working on the, the sort of the permissions thing, but I think if, yeah, if a crew member, from my last understanding of the document, and again, this is a design question, so a little outside of my purview, but um, from what I understand that the, whoever sort of controls the permissions of the ship can turn off, like the permissions. So if some the guy turns on you and decides to shoot you, you can basically yeah. lock them out if you can get to a terminal. I don't know where that's slated to go in. I know there's a security element. Yes, uh, basically it's all part of the the item system 2.0 thing with all the different ship consoles. I will tell you, based on Chris's discussions about other game systems. Uh, He's generally, if I can speak on behalf of Chris here, uh, less concerned with nanny-stating things 
than letting you guys find solutions to these problems yourself. It's, it's, we want a world where your crew members can mutiny on you and take control of your ship because we want you to find the solutions to that. Exactly. It, it's, it's far more compelling gameplay wise if the community is forced to, to make alliances with each other and, 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 forced, and, and, and forced to work together to stop things like that than we put in a gameplay system that prevents something that's potentially very cool from happening. So the short answer to that is the way that you will prevent mutiny is, is be nicer to your crew, I guess. <laughs> Pay them on time. The reason I brought it up is because of the intent to implement a criminality system and when you're interacting with NPCs that's very cut and dry but interactions between players and criminality was kind of a gray area. Yeah. Uh, we've talked a bit about the job board. Uh, the job well is an is a area inside our corp, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, where you'll be able to post for crew positions. Like, I need uh, this person, I need, a, I need a comms officer, I need a shields officer, I need an engines officer for this, stuff like that. And the ability to rate people. So basically, you put, you make a posting. I need this person as a comms, as a shields officer, and they accept the, the job. They come on, they crew your ship, and you go on your mission. And everything's successful, and it's awesome. You go back and you rate that person four stars. I'm not saying it's a star system; it's whatever it will be. But you go back and rate that person, and now you, that person begins to build a reputation. So you can decide, I'm not going to hire anybody that doesn't have at least 15 reviews already. And it's not over, you know, eighty percent, you know. Or you can be the person that's like, I want to give everybody their first chance, and I'm going to take the people with one review, you know, and, and no rating. Uh, and then by the flip side, of that token is you hire this guy, and then you 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 you're on your address, and the opposing address shows up, and your shields suddenly go down, and you're like, what's happening to my shields? And that guy that you hired is like, not me, you're running to the engine room. You're gonna probably you should probably give them a one star. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing because it's actually it's an ongoing discussion right now about that sort of question of like, you know, how do you identify a criminal? What is that? Because we don't because we don't have the class system, it becomes an interesting discussion because it's like, you know, I shouldn't be able to just look at somebody and go, oh, that's a, that's a criminal. What is that? What exactly does that mean? I mean, they could have active crime stats, like they could be wanted for murder, which would probably you know ping your your interest. But but yeah, it's a very interesting thing because it's like you know because someone has. You know, actually bump into a ship, if, if you play the alpha now, like if you bump into a ship, suddenly you're, you know, public enemy number one. And it's like, but if I go and I pay off my bounty, I've committed a crime, but I've, I've paid for it. So it's trying to figure out that sort of fun line of like, you know, you can have a background, but not be immediately identified as like, oh, I'm a bounty. So yeah, that's, it's actually a very fascinating, ongoing discussion. And something that you guys will help us develop. Yeah, almost certainly. All right, cool, thank you. Bet your crew. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I have two questions and I can't decide which one to ask. So, uh, astrobiology based lore question or game development schedule question? Uh, well, we're not going to be able to talk too much about when, so probably stick to the lore question. Okay. Uh, what are the odds of us encountering a sapient alien species that is not humanoid? Um, excellent question. Um. <coughs> well, we can tell them about the. No, we can't tell them about the thing. <laughs> you are Thank you very much. That answers everything. Um, no, it's it's actually an interesting thing because like with a lot of the uh, I, I've been seeing like the forums and stuff like that with the Banyo and the Shion and stuff that it's like oh they're they're basically humanoid you know yawn. Well, that's you cool know. though. It's like Star Wars, Star Trek type alien. It's awesome. It's well, it's also it's it's actually it's an animation thing too uh, because it, it especially for for ships that you humans are ultimately going to fly, yeah. it's easier to make it if they're, you know, uh, relatively similar in size and shape than if they're, you know, bizarro plant things and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, just to, to say, I mean, we have the, the Fair Chance planets, which are the planets that are being actively protected by the government because they have alien life on them. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, uh, and downloaded it. I did, I did a sketch once of the Asoians. I don't know if you read the story of the Lost Generation. I did a sketch of one of the aliens that um, one of the designers posted on Confluence and said, don't ever show this to the animators because they will kill you. Uh, <laughs> so I'm hoping that with those we can get a little weirder because there's no expectation that they're going to be flying. So that, I don't, that, that you will need to fly their ship. So hopefully we will be able to get some more aliens. So this is kind of a follow-up question on uh, as far as reputation and 
criminality. Uh, as far as reputation, we know that your reputation affects how entities see you. But as far as that goes for your organization, is that a blanket thing as if you do something bad that may negatively affect your org or is it still in talks of, you know, how bad it is, this and that? Is there anything that you can say about that? Uh, Chris, has, uh, Chris has talked a little bit about this in the past. Uh, it's one of those things where it's not a system that's necessary right now. So you, when, you, when you don't need it right now for what you're doing, you want to you kind of reserve the right to come up with a better idea later on, so you don't want to you don't want to nail too many things down too early when the information is not necessary. But there will be different levels. Like there, there may be certain quests, certain missions that you're only reflective of yourself. You're you're a member of an organization, but you're working as, as your as, as your as your own independent contractor. But then there may be some missions at some point that are necessary. Like we need a group. We need an organization. We want to hire an organization to do this kind of thing, and you need to provide. Ten members of this to do it. So you know, it's the, the world is open to this kind of thing. We reserve the right to, to do both. It's basically the short answer to that. But it, it, as of right now, it's not an answer that we need at the moment. So we reserve the the, the, the right to have a better idea. But between now and the time when it's time to put it in the game. Thank you. Yeah. Now that's a point. He, he, he's the guy that's going to be involved in that stuff. He's like, that'll be fun. It will be fun. So, well, because it, it raises interesting questions of like, at what point am I my negative actions being represented on to my reputation? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and that's well, just with NPCs. Now you've got players, players <coughs> choosing to hold something against you or hold something against your entire org. You know, right. there's, there's no telling what a player is going to choose to do with that information. So. I, uh, I asked this question two years ago uh, at, at DragonCon, actually. Um, I never got a full-fledged answer. Pirating, just outright. Would we ever be getting like our own line, not really our own line of ships, but like pirate organizations or pirate corporations, a little under the law side that will manufacture and produce their own type of ship lines? Uh, or anything of anything of that, that nature, like type, types of weapons or crafting. Type. Well, about crafting, but I think sh the, the ships might be a tricky one just because it's that becomes a balance issue. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it, it does. It's like in the real world today. There aren't corporations <coughs> that make things specifically for illegal use. Yeah. You know, a lot, a, a lot of, at the core of piracy is taking things that are meant to, to be good and true and just and perverting them. How about corrupt, uh, corrupt corporations? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's his area. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's always become the, been the fascinating thing with like Drake and the Planetary. It's that, you know they, they they get a rep of like being a, a criminal corporation, but one of the things that, that we we tend to do is, is to try and temper that expectation because you know they they're not they're capitalizing off of the fact that their stuff is used by criminals, but they're not outright making it for crime. You Come know, on, so Dave. How complicit are they? Telling you they're not. <laughs> they know what they know what's up. I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> I just had a quick question. Um, sure. You guys have one here? Yeah, go ahead. Um, as far as lore perspective, from someone who's really not into the game yet, um, considering it new to my friend who dragged me here, um, <laughs> how is, that? is the lore to actually grasp for someone coming from an outside perspective that hasn't been here for the full development? Uh, I hate the lore. Very hard. Uh, <laughs> just, it's. It's too tough right now. Um, we're actually we're, we're we're trying to put together a way that it becomes a lot easier to get uh, into sort of because basically the thing is we we've been doing every Tuesday we we do a news update what we call the news update which is sort of an in lore piece that can be like a news article, um, a transcript of a TV show or whatever, and we've been doing it every week outside of I think three times for almost five years now. So. It's, it's massive. Uh, but as far as a way to get into it, there's actually a thing um, that I, I need to update it, uh, which is on my list of to-dos. But uh, we have a writer's guide that basically, because uh, on our, our, our webpage, we have a very active fan fiction section. And so the idea was very early on was like, well, let's release what we've got so far and what the public knows. Like, we're going to save some stuff because we want you guys to discover it in the game. But like, release what the public knows as a compiled, basically, show bible that you can see through like a TV show. Uh, 
know, of like, these are the alien races, these are how the humans feel about them, these are how they feel about the humans. Uh, and that would actually probably be the easiest way to, if you wanted to get into it, it's much shorter and much easier to kind of figure out the areas that interest you and then start to dive in deeper. Uh, but hopefully we're going to reorganize it so it's a bit more comprehensive, because right now it's very we also have a bi-weekly series called Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy, which uses our web-based atlas of the entire known galaxy and allow, allows our writers to discuss not just the science of the star system, it's ostensibly about the star system, but what it ends up being is a lot of the lore and history of the galaxy. And it, 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 it can be done like a, like a series of podcasts. There's a playlist on our YouTube. You can start it, and you, you can download them and listen to them. You know, on, on, on a trip, like in, I, I tend to listen to them on airplanes. You know, that's the only way. Cause I'm there when we're filming it, but I don't I always, you know, retain everything. So, so I, I tend to listen to them when I'm traveling. Uh, it becomes a, it becomes a great low impact way of learning of going. Why did you make up so much stuff? Is, is it really that big a game? And the answer is yeah, yes. it's really that big. Game. Thank you. I'm gonna show you the best part about being on the panel right now. I always feel like you're a special person. Yeah. Yep, I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bragging about it. Um, I had a technical question about software project management. Um, so, you guys made an interesting uh, statement after 2.6.1 was released, and that it would take you a couple weeks to release the schedule for 2.6.2 if you didn't know what was going to be in the next mm -hmm. release. Uh, I've worked in software project management since the late 90s. Mm -hmm. and maybe a civilian military. Um, I've worked on projects that are waterfall, agile, rapid development, feature driven. I mean, I've never heard of a software project manager for a team where you didn't know what was in your next release. I'm curious what you guys are using. Well, it's, it's, it's different than not knowing, it's not being able to commit to the thing. There, there's, there's, we have, we have, like, we're working on 3.0 right now. And we've got 3.1 plot planned out. We've got 3.2. We, we know that this system, we want to try to have mining in 3.1. We know we want you know a, a, a different game system in 3.2, a different system game in, in 3.3. Uh, the, the issue is because we're actually we're actively releasing the product in, in the middle of the in, in the middle of development, we have the virtue of having the feedback from everybody. So we use that feedback to alter our perception, our plans of what goes into each patch. So like if, if we, we think this feature is going into 261, and we uh, 260 with Star Marine, for instance, and you hope that Star Marine's gonna come out and everything's gonna be great and awesome and, and, and work, right? But then you find out that, oh, th this doesn't quite work the way that we wanted it to. This feature really doesn't work the way that we thought we wanted to, and we had planned to revisit it back in like 3.1, but right now it makes the gameplay system absolutely untenable. So we get that through the feedback of 2.6.0, so we will move that from 3.1 up into 2.6.3. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the freedom of using the feedback that we get from operating live development, as a, a live environment in the middle of development, to adjust our plans accordingly. Yeah, we, we use a, we use a Jira, uh, we use Agile, um, and there's a third one. Hmm? We use Microsoft Project for our scheduling, <coughs> but there's a there's another one I'm forgetting the name of right now because it's, I just call it the blue one. But <laughs> confluence. Hello, hi. I have another design question, so I apologize in advance. So we've got you got the Idris uh, for you have Gavlin Destroyer, you have Bengal Carriers. Is there any work going in, in between things, cruisers, battleships, other things to flex the fleet out? I'm an Navy guy, I have heard out about this. <laughs> I was wondering, hey, we're hiring, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you hiring too? <laughs> uh, any ships? We've, we've talked about the battle cruiser. Yeah. We, we talked about the battle cruiser being playable, not necessarily that we, we, we would sell it. It was a stretch goal that we would have a playable battle cruiser, right. but not necessarily that we would ever sell it for ownership mm -hmm. uh, that way. Um, uh, yeah, well, the, the Idris became a frigate. Yeah, then that was the Corvette. The, 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 cor the Corvette. Where, yeah, the Idris used to be a Corvette, and it got it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there's talk about the, the Polaris became the new Corvette. There's talk about the Pegasus. Right. Talked about the Pegasus a couple times. Yeah. This. Yes. We're not supposed to acknowledge this. <laughs> 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 I 
But that won't be presented. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there's, I mean, again, it's just it's a question of, of timing and schedule and getting everything yeah. done. I mean, you know, right now it's building up the fleet as is, and then hopefully. I don't mean necessarily like for us to fly around in star system, but for squadron 42, for the fleet going around, you know, hey, you're on the bank going you go out and all the ships are flying past going out. Like, right. There's battleship, there's two cruisers riding shotgun, there's a destroyer on the predator, and away we go. Yeah. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe today I'll never do story. Cruisers. Maybe zero. Why not? I don't remember. Hello, you, Tommy. Uh, I'm curious. With the recent partnership with uh, Amazon AWS and the Lumberjack systems, uh, if there's any intention or known intention to open source any of the uh, serious uh, platform work that you've been doing within your game engine. <laughs> We're the wrong guy for that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, we're, we're the wrong we're the wrong guys for that one. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know a lot a lot of the, the partnership stuff with Amazon is a sharing of technologies. Like like you, you read the stories where there, there have been a number of press stories where it's like uh, CIG switched to, to the lumberyard and it only took them a day. You know, because it, it really we didn't switch lumberyard. We're still using Star Engine, the, our, our own internal engine. We are now just sharing technologies. It's we give them. We give them the work that we're doing. Yeah, yeah, we. Yeah, we 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 promised early on that there would be mod tools and stuff like that. So at some point uh, later down the development, we will have to start developing a program uh, that, that would that would assist you guys in that, It'd assist you guys in being able to create mods because we all want to see the, the, the Star Wars version of this. We all you know, we we want we want to see you guys modding and stuff like that. Um, fan created videos, the simplest type of mod in the world. There used to be far more of those until we had to start locking down our builds and whatnot. And I've talked with Chris about, you know, creating content releases where basically we give you the assets and stuff separate from the game so they're not all encrypted and stuff like that. So there's, there's a lot of talk about it, but it, it, it's not a thing that needs a, an answer right now. So it doesn't have one. So I'm a casual gamer, and oftentimes I get back from work and I just want to kick ass. But uh, in a lot of online games, that's not accessible to me because, to be honest, a bunch of 14 year olds. So can I uh, can I run my own open world server? And two, can I adjust difficulty levels for not Squadron 42, but Star Citizen itself? One of the earliest. Uh, pledge goals when when this when the project launched in 2012 was the ability to run private servers. So it's I can't tell you what shape or form or how robust that's going to be because the scope the scope of the game has increased quite a bit since 2012. But uh, I know it, it comes up every once in a while and it's like yeah we have to make the game first and then we figure out you know what we, what we can provide to you as far as tools with private servers and stuff. But it was one of the earliest yeah. or, or earliest things we offered with Star Citizen. So okay. it, it will happen. It's just a question of what form, what shape, size, and form it will take when that day comes. It probably won't be as big as the game that we're trying to make, but. Okay. Yeah. I have a salvage question. Um, so will we ever be able to salvage not like old ships, but not necessarily old alien ships, but like, like previous generations of humanity ships. So not necessarily flyable ships, but like wrecks of old, uh, right. like, like outdated, outdated, no longer flyable. Ships. Uh, I mean, I, that's, a, that's a, a very good question. I mean, it's, it's interesting because it becomes one of the things that's like, you know, old ships are still ships that need to be built. Uh, I mean, I think, it depends on whether you want the ship to be flyable. What's your definition like of salvage is? Like, no flyable. Like, just, just debris and it's wreckage. Debris. It's like outdated. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we didn't have to make it flyable, if we didn't have to build the game systems for it, if it didn't have to be if it didn't have to be 1-1, one, because one, if anybody's not familiar, we build all our ships 1-1. One, one. All the internal components are there. All the internal corridors are there. So if, if we're talking about just a, a wreck of an older ship that you've never seen before that could be turned into scrap, that's definitely so. Well, the, there actually, there's already some ver uh, versions of that. Uh, we, we take space stations and stuff, things that you wouldn't be able to, to own, right? Well, at least not yet. Uh, and turn them into scrap and right. wrecks and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I would say it's definitely in the realm of the yeah, realm it's, of possibility. It's definitely much more possible if, if they're just strictly props. Yeah. Then I think it becomes much more feasible. And plus, I think it's, it also makes people think 
depending on how we tag it, like that type of thing, like it might just be metadata, essentially. So, so yeah, it seems like. It, you know, at the same time, I would I would like to I would like to be able to salvage like the old spaceship version of a 1970s Dodge Dart oh, yeah. and fly around in it. You know, it's just that you can only get through salvage and restoration. <laughs> Somebody write that down. <laughs> get an idea. I'm going to get another angry letter from Chris Roberts. Okay, I'm uh, looking to be interested in getting the uh, crucible, you know, the ship where you basically go around to mm -hmm. patch everybody's strange desire to play bumper cars with their fighters. Uh, but uh, what about ship? that can do um, repair bigger ships. So you, would there be anything like, or how, would be anything bigger than the Crucible, or more, like do you say if you wanna fix up like a bangle, you ever find the wreck or something? Well, right. the Crucible can be used yeah, to fix up. Both. Remember, the Crucible has two, uh, two different repair bays. And there's the rear repair bay, where you land a ship inside it, and it mm -hmm. fixes it up and be closed. Yeah, they but like it also on. has the front. It also, it's also meant to be a, a, a repair and tender ship to much larger capital okay. ships. Oh yeah, I was just wasn't sure how I didn't know that I wasn't sure how that would work. Uh, the crucible is a great ship. Okay. Yeah, if anybody wants a crucible? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna you 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 bump, bump up your mess up your ship. You're gonna be looking at me to get a good thing. Um, so this is a question about the uh, the criminality system again. Um, if let's say somebody were coming towards my ship that I had gotten out of for a little bit and they were clearly going to try to steal it or try to ransack it and I were to fire just maybe a warning shot that, that hit them, then I become uh, flagged as the aggressor. They just start railing into me even though I do nothing else. Do they still not gain any criminal um, any criminal reputation by killing me? And if I were to put up a, uh, a fight to defend myself, is that no longer considered self-defense because I made the first shot? How do we balance that out? Is that a space text? That is one of the things. <laughs> uh, no, that's actually that's a, I mean, it's a, one example that is often debated. It's just that sort of thing. It's like intent. Like, how, at what point can you kind of declare that someone's intending to do something that's against the law? And at what point can you kind of intervene? Um, I'm trying to think of the doc. Well, the version of the criminality system that's in there right now is literally it's a B001. It's the very earliest thing. It, it's, it's just. It's really meant as a way to get you to spawn the Grim Hex and and, 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 and to do that and to do the most wanted mission. Right. Um, as, as, like all the things in Star Citizen, it will progress, it will iterate. Uh, we have no shortage of complex systems in our game. The criminality system will be just as complex, whatever shape that, that takes. Uh, there is there is the document, unfortunately, I, couldn't, I can't read it off from, from memory right now. Uh, it's one of those things where you'll, you'll, you'll see an upgraded version of it in 3.0 and then we will get your feedback and then you'll see it iterated 3.1, 3.2, and stuff like that. But it's one, something like that, something that, that affects player experience is one of those things, since we have the opportunity to build a game with live feedback while we're building it, we want to use that feedback. So it's, you don't want to have too many preconceived ideas about it. You want to try a thing, get the feedback, all right, try this, get the feedback, okay, try this, and that's almost certainly how that's going to progress. And is there still going to be the uh, the no witness, no crime system? Uh, certain systems. Yeah, it, well, it depends on where you do it. Uh, I mean, if there's if there's no comma ray active or... Correct. If it does that. Yeah, the idea is, yeah, basically it's, it's locked into the, sort of the black box of the ship. So the, the black box records what happens. But that's, that's sort of, again, the V0 approach. It's going to see how that works. The stand system is a system full of squares. Yeah, man. Okay. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Um, I got a lot of questions about the cycle around the line, but more importantly, um, especially for large orgs, uh, one of them we have access to fleet view, so we can do some logistics and planning for what ships we have, what we can do with ships. So we, you know, the fleet view is really, really important for large orgs. Yeah. Fleet, fleet view has been on the list. Of, <laughs> we've been talking about fleet view. Fleet view. Well, I can't say that. Try to try to say fleet view five times in the same. Uh, since 2014, if I remember correctly. Um, it's on the list, it's just right now uh, Turbulent, which is our our partners in web development. This is a project that falls to Turbulent. Uh, they are working on our new updated 3.0 new player experience right now. And then comes the new uh, organization system. You know, the, you've seen part of that with Spectrum. Spectrum was born out of the, the updated organization system. Um, we need to get permissions and everything for, for that right 
because right now, if you, you try to use your organization spectrum, it's you don't have permissions, you can't set things right. There's there's still a lot of work. It's not it's not basically what I'm trying to say is that it's something we want to do, but there's higher priority tasks for our web team right now. And even with the hundred and some odd million okay. dollars and 500 people around the world, there's still a finite number of resources. So it's just it's a thing where we keep finding more important things. To do. But it's on the list. It's been on the list. I just can't get there. ETA. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Right. Hey um, um, thanks for coming out. I uh, really appreciate you answering all the questions here. Uh, I have something that's kind of been touched on in the past and something that couldn't really be answered a couple years ago, but with uh, all the planetary tech that's uh, been advanced and, and the uh, outposts being modular and, and really easy to plop down, uh, has there been any any movement towards players being able to discover new planets and maybe own their own outposts? I'm not giving an answer to this question. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to look at the smile on my face, <laughs> but just leave it Thank at you. The things you can't talk about is the same word as banana. <laughs> banana, 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 banana. <laughs> Hi, on the uh, procedural tech, uh, similar question. Um, have you seen any work done on Earth yet? Like, will it be a big no-fly zone? And how about uh, flowing bodies of water? Because all we've seen is solid planets so far. Um, no work on Earth no. just yet. Well, we we got we got quite water a ways. They're, 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 they're still playing with water, yeah, but we got a we got a ways into Terra. Uh, if you've seen pictures of of our uh, LA office and on, around the British nose, our commissary is covered wall to wall in Terra. Well, that's actually an engine. When we were originally building Terra as the original landing zone, the, the first landing zone, before somebody had the brilliant idea that the Stanton system was everything in Star Citizen. Like you, you, you build the Stanton system out, and you've got everything you need for Star Citizen. Now it's a case of replication and iteration. So work on the Terra system was was halted at that point. Uh, but no work on Earth. Uh, I asked the water question uh, from the, our guys in Frankfurt just three weeks ago, and uh, they're all so focused, so focused on getting three point out the door. They are jumping, anxious to jump at the bit for water. Water will definitely be a will be a presence in Star Citizen, but the work work just hasn't started on it yet. And we'll ship the sink. <laughs> Because we haven't started the work on it, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Will there be self-driving spaceships that could go from point A to point B with cargo goods or follow you around like a pack mule? Um, not as, as far as I know, like, not as an AI thing. I think part of the thing, uh, that's why we, in our history of the future, we basically have made, jumped through a lot of hoops to make sure that people don't use AI. Because uh, the idea was that it was supposed to be a more tactile thing that people you know, flu system and stuff like that to force you to go out there because, you know, if, if you look at it realistically, like, uh, AI probably would fly the ship much better than any person would. Uh, and so that kind of takes the player out of the driver's seat. So Chris, that was one of the things very early on, Chris was like, oh, no, I want to, I want to keep it so people have to do stuff, so the players have to go do stuff. So, uh, I mean, we, we talked about, and I can't remember which ship has, so there's this sort of like remote pilot drone, uh, but I don't think, I don't think they would be fully automated uh, stuff. I mean, we actually did a news update uh, about uh, people trying to build them again, and they, they failed. But, but, uh, but yeah, just again, uh, to, to kind of force people to have to get on so they can fly it themselves or hire someone to fly it. There are many decisions in our development where you take it to the point of realism and then you can bring it back a little bit for gameplay and fun. Yeah. And we don't we don't want a game that you can just automate yeah. you know, too much. So. Or just hang out and just have your. Uh, we have about 15 minutes left. Uh, I want to make sure that we can show the thing that we brought before one. Yeah. But it's all right. No, it's, it doesn't take too long. We, we're going to keep going. I just want to make sure it's in our heads. Okay. Hey guys. Hello. Hey, thanks for showing up. Fans, it's September 11th, 2012. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, when Star Citizen finally goes live, gold, you're out in the public. I'm an explorer. I want to burn space as fast as I can. Be the first person to make contact with Kurt Thack. Is that going to be a possibility? Kurt uh, Thack question. Uh, you knew it was coming. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, again, that's all the conversations that we've had about them has been the fact that like that we're kind of looking at the, the likely possibility of like keeping it as a player discover thing. That like you basically would have this sort of huge chapter of story that's waiting until somebody finds it. But it will be built out so that day one I could possibly eventually get there well, and find them. There's no guarantee it's gonna be a day one thing. Okay. It, yeah. It's it's because if you're if you're talking about just for storytelling purposes, you don't want something like that found. Well, obviously it takes a while to get there just because there's so much space. It's a huge game on the top of months to get there. So, so it won't be day one obviously when we get there, but you know, have that as a goal if you want to get there. And when I get there, is it gonna be in the system? I don't know that we can commit to it being day yeah. one. <laughs> but that the idea of it being a player who is the one who makes that discovery. Hi, I have a, an exobiology question for you. So when we're out exploring and say we go on a planet and we find some sort of a creature that we like and we want to bring with us for whatever reason, I'm assuming they've evolved in a very different planetary sort of environment. Are we going to need some sort of life support system in order to keep them secure or are these kind are of... You, are, you talking, are you talking about a pet or a companion? Pet, companion, um, you know, new trade, empire, good, whatever. <laughs> Um, I mean, atmosphere is a thing, so, you know, um, in reality, as well as our game. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, our, in our next patch, in our next patch, we have oxygenation of blood as a factor of your right. character, and, and, and the, the oxygen level of your blood yeah. Yeah, determines how fast your stamina <laughs> replenishes and how, how long and how often you can boost. So, the, the, idea that, the idea that you're talking about is definitely something that the people, that the people who work here would gravitate towards. I don't think I don't and think like that answer. Food or even just pressurization, anything like that that might keep them alive versus, you uh, know, they yeah, get popped I mean, out as soon as they go on your ship. I guess it's a question of yes, if you if you found them on a planet that does not have an oxygen based atmosphere, I feel like if you brought them aboard your ship they would probably die. Um, <laughs> but um, I mean again like whether you could get a cage that you could pressurize to whatever the thing, you know, I I don't know. I mean it, They've been talking about the animals has been a big thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if it's a, a species that shows intelligence, then you'd be breaking the law. Uh, so that's important to know. Uh, and don't do that. Uh, <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, I don't know the answer, but I know some people that we work with who would be very excited about yes. finding the answer to that. So good. So <laughs> something to look forward to. It, I would think. Thank you. I have a question about uh, when you use a rover versus like a NOx on the planet surface versus when you would just fly there. I know there are there are no fly zones. Is that going to be the only time you wouldn't just take your ship to where you're going as the fastest means of surface level transportation? I okay. I, I loaded a 3.0 for the very first time maybe two months ago. But I tried to I, I tried to stay with what you guys play. It helps me co correlate your feedback. If I keep most of what's in my head to be what's in your guys' experience. And with the very first time I loaded up 3.0, I was in a Gladius, and I was flying over it. And I was just remarking, God, this is so slow. I'm like, I'm crawling. Flight speeds have to be really messed up because I felt like I was just making no progress. I was going, and then an outpost came out and it went, <laughs> and it went past me. And I realized, oh, it's because on a, on a barren moon without sky, uh, skyscrapers and stuff, I have no frame of reference for how fast I was actually going. Basically, the, 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 my answer to your question is, flying over the surface of the planet is a great way to get from A to B, but it's not a great means of discovery. I mean, I, I, when I saw the outpost go by, I was like, how much have I just completely flown over? How many chests? Full of loot. How many? You know, how, how many creatures? How, how many? I'm looking for the black box. You know, which is the size of half a Dave Haddock. You know, sitting in the thing. Did I just pass because I was zooming over in my ship and not at gra relative ground speeds? So like that. So I, I think the I think the most likely answer to that is that the ship will be your great your best way of getting from A to B as fast as possible, yeah, but not for a sense of discovery. But, but like if you're, yeah, if you're trying to really take on the scenery, probably. or find. Or yeah, your, your, mission is to, your mission is to find the black box of a down thing on a giant moon. 
there's no guarantee it's going to be inside a massive wreck. You know, you're going to want to. They're going to want to be ground level. You're going to want to be ground level scans, just like that. And again, scanners and stuff like the like the uh, Mercer rover and stuff. You know, a, a spaceship designed for outer space may not have the may not necessarily have the best equipment for ground based <laughs> locations or stuff, locating them. Stuff. Great, thank you. Um, my next question. I, I have a lot of questions that got inundated. Um, one person with me is, I, I really want underground bases. I want to cut rock and have mods kind of shelved in, as well as possibly underwater bases. Is that an option? Um, is it only be surface tech? But it, it, it goes back to the answer about the water stuff. We haven't started working on water, so I can't, we can't. No, it's so a surface, like can you cut I, I know, but get to, you also asked about underwater. So I can't, um, answer, I can't say anything about the underwater stuff. For the subsurface stuff, we don't have cave tech right now, but it's on it's on the list. I've, I've talked I've talked with um, um, who is it? In Germany. Yeah, it's in Germany, but it's Rikuchi. I've talked with Rikuchi a couple of times about it because it's it's something on the development calendar. It's just right now it's not necessary for three L. So you work on the thing that's right in front of you. Work on the thing that everybody's sitting here waiting for us to get out. And, you know, so it's but. Caves are definitely something that's on the list. But with the water, with for underwater bases, I can't comment until we've started doing the development for water. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I'm an alcoholic. I've never played games any character. What is the connectivity between your characters and your ships going to be like? And second part would be, if it launches only like two or three races or four races, however many there are, and then you know six months later you come up with a new race, how difficult will it be to say, Hey, I love this new race. I want to play it, but you know, I've invested in this human since launch. Well, right now, humans are the only playable race. Uh, they're the only intention of a playable race. Not, that's not to say it won't change no. later in the future. So you, you, you know, I was under the impression that the other three races that you showed would eventually be playable. That's a, that was the goal. Is that also the well, not the Vandal, the uh, Vandal Orb. Uh, but the, yeah, the, ultimately the idea was that there's, because there's also another one actually that's foreign that we were missing, uh, that they would be, they would ultimately be playable, but there's no sense of exactly when we would be. First, we want to get them in the game, uh, and then it's a question of figuring out when, when they use them. Uh, half the people here can, can attest that we're still working on getting a female human <laughs> in the game. So, so it, it, it's basically just a cart before the horse kind of thing. Um, but right, right now it's, Again, a lot of this, a lot of running a live live environment in the middle of game development is working on the things that are right there in front of you because those are the things that have got to go out into your hands right now. So I, I, we, I can't comment about uh, the alien races. As far as alts, um, we've talked about before, there, there should be no limitation. So you, know, you can make, you make, make as many alts provided that you have uh, the, the game packages that support them and stuff like that. But uh, one of the things that Chris has talked about in the past is for those people who aren't necessarily an alcoholic, maybe you just, I want to be a criminal one day. You know, I'm Jared, I'm Jared in the game. And I want to be a criminal one day, I want to, but I also, but I want to be a, a good person the next day. The ways to hack your personal records, and hack your reputation, and appear as somebody else, as opposed to appearing as yourself. Basically a way to alcoholic while being on the same character the entire time. So. The options are there. It, it's it's just at this point, it's it's still too early to. And especially because like we're saying, like because you're not locked into a class, like you can kind of play how you want to play on it. Exactly. Uh, that's uh, the biggest thing. The no class thing is we want to make this so you can do everything you want to do with your character. We still expect people to, to play all the alt characters. My my father has three already. <laughs> and but uh, it's yeah, you know, it's basically it's we want to cater to both sides. We should show that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Two more minutes? Yeah. All right, two more minutes. Rapid fire. Okay, quickly uh, stated, uh, you're doing a lot more uh, ground vehicle work. Any thoughts on Max Walker's lightning vehicles instead of wheels? Oh. <laughs> Paging Sean Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's a great question. What? <laughs> No, nothing I can I, I, we can speak of definitively right now. It is we, we have a number of people like Sean Tracy, prominent in the company, who worked on MechWarrior and stuff. There, there's there's a lot of love for it. Um, I don't know that there's any 
distinct plans. When I say I don't know, I'm just being genuine. I'm not obfuscating, obfuscating, I can't say the word. Yeah, that's what they said. I honestly don't know the, the answer to it. But there's a, there's, there's a number of people in our company yeah, who are, who are big fans. So, short board questions. Um, currently, certain F-35s are outfitted with uh, cameras on the vehicle and heads up displays and the helmet such that a pilot can look down and see through his vehicle. Uh, and I sit down as a freelancer a couple hundred years in the future and I get a little strip of vision out the window. Um, I'm just curious if there's something in the war that's going to explain why we don't have those type of technologies that we have today. And yeah, Dave. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's been talk about, I think part of it was also the, the, the display thing. Uh, it was about giving sort of, you know, even a base functionality like uh, Prius parallel parking camera. I think because I, I crash all the time in my ship because I can't see the ground. And I have to go to third person to to, to bounce the side of my ship. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's what the plan is. I'm not entirely sure what what they're planning to do for that. If they're actually going to be adding uh, assigning monitors to be able to switch to that kind of functionality or build pop up an element in the HUD, I'm not I'm not entirely sure about. But I think that there's supposed to be something that allows you to get a bit more visibility uh, rather than just you know like. A we just implemented a new technology called render detection. And basically it allows us to put remote cameras and have them appear on screens as textures so that it runs very low memory wise and stuff. Because you know, the, the worst thing that hap ever happens in a video game is you find a mirror and if it actually shows your reflection, your performance goes to, to heck. So the render detector is, is our answer for a lot of those questions. Um, it is just now coming online. So. We're using it for for a couple things storytelling wise, and a couple things a couple things with uh, with our our shops and our innkeepers. And but as it's a, as it's a technology that we have, it's it, with, now that it's a tool in our bag. Uh, there's no telling what our what our designers, what our ship artists and are going to start using it for now that we've got that tool in our bag. So, but you make a good point. It is a it is a thing that's available today. It's one of those things where. We will explore it, we will pursue it to the point of realism, then we will bring it back to where we think it should be gameplay-wise. So. Um, so this is no doubt a very large game with a huge feature list. Um, I was wondering um, if you had kind of defined your definition of done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, do you have a goal where you're looking to get um, fine to do a release? And uh, you talk a little bit about that. What's the just, yeah, just so you're assured that you're not just going to keep adding features. Yeah, right, right. Added Probably the most common question we get. Mm -hmm. uh, and no, 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> it, but it's, it, it doesn't make it any easier to have an answer to it. It's yeah, We are right now in Star Citizen Alpha 3.0. At some point, there will be Star Citizen Beta. At some point, there will be Star Citizen 1.0. You know, that, that when that day happens, when that, the switch is flipped, when we all pop the champagne and say, you know, 1.0, I, I couldn't tell you. It's a little too far out in the future right now. It's, again, it's, it just comes back to the cart for, for the horse thing. Uh, there are, we have an entire exec team, people with much higher, but, 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 but much, much higher uh, pay grades than we are who have to sweat that kind of stuff. It's just not an answer that I have, unfortunately. Thank you very much. All right, so I want to just announce that we're having a bar citizen at the side I'm car tonight. Have you guys invited, especially you guys, of course, at the side car at 8 p.m. Come one, come all. Thank you. Where? Side car pub. It's downtown. Side car. Side car. Side car. Side bar. Side bar. So this side bar, it starts at 8 o'clock. It's that way, about eight minutes walk. We will be there and we will be there and undoubtedly answering more questions for several hours. <laughs> so he is going to set up to show this thing. I want to take a picture. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Ben Lesnick? Uh, ben Lesnick has been out. He's, what, he's our director of community engagement, online strategy, and spaceships. He's been with the project since the very beginning. And he's been out on um, medical leave for several weeks. He is coming back to work on Tuesday. And I <laughs> Hey Ben, where's the carrot? 
half of you will know what that means. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the countdown. Okay. Go ahead. One, two, three. Hey! 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 Um, for those of you who are familiar, we, we fund the development of our game through the uh, pledging of concept ships. Uh, basically ships that we're adding to the game that add some kind of gameplay to our ever-expanding universe of Star Citizen. And for those of you here, you'll get a sneak preview. Oh! I should preface this is a very early work in progress. This yeah. is not done. This <coughs> no. is this is not even the image that you're going to see when it com when it comes to sale. This is. And I think I'm going to get some angry emails. Yes. <laughs> very early, early. Stuff. Very early stuff. But this is just to give a sense of. Uh, uh, as we can get questions about the sort of not right, but we've been doing a lot of expanding to a lot of land based stuff. But this is actually more. Uh, Whoa, nice. So if you follow the with, we have two space bikes. We have the uh, Dragonfly made by Drake. It's very uh, utilitarian. It's, it's very working class. We have the we have the Xion Knox, which is very alien space bike. You know, maybe a little uh, Tron influence, maybe not. And now, this is our third space bike from Origin. Essentially, our our, our BMW of the Star Citizen universe. And you see, it's. It's almost practically standing up, yes. It's a, it's a much different experience than the uh, Dragonfly or the Knox. Yeah. Well, uh, Dragonfly was like the Harley, yeah. and the Knox was like the Kawasaki. Yeah. How do you get into it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I asked the exact same question. Uh, that, that's part that they're still getting back to us on. So, so that will be on, that will be available. Star <laughs> <laughs> Citizen tonight, eight o'clock. Sidebar. Sidebar.